First question I have for you is kind of like a fun, silly one. So let's say you, as in real you, you're stuck in a car and there's a rogue lion stalking you. You could pick two past co-stars to be in that car with you. Who do you pick to give yourself the best chance of surviving? Ooh, wow. Two past co-stars for the best chance of surviving? Wow. <laughs> wow. With a lion in Africa, I'm going to go with... It might be cliche, but I'm going to say Liam Neeson would be one. Makes sense. Okay. Um, I think Liam would be a good call. And who else? Um, probably Angelina, actually. She would be, yeah, she would be pretty hardcore. I like she, that. She has like a hardcore edge. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Probably her. Uh, yeah. Solid team right there. I'm weighing your team versus Idris's team right oh, yeah. now. He's who does he choose? He went uh, Michael Fassbender. Okay. And he also. Not me, clearly, which is a little bit upset. Because I, I thought of saying him, and then I was like, I'm not sure. <laughs> he picked Michael Fassbender and Kate Winslet. Oh, okay. okay. All right. I believe in both of these teams. I'll just yeah. give you both points for okay. this. Okay. I think we could take them, but anyway, all right. <laughs> all right. Getting into the VFX, because you've done an especially large amount of films with heavy VFX in it. So with Beast, it seems mm. like an especially unique challenge. So. What is something that you did for the first time VFX-wise on Beast that would make District 9 you go like, oh my, I never could have imagined that would be possible this many years later? Yeah, that's a great question. Actually playing with the lions. So there's a scene in the movie, uh, I don't know if that's... I'm I know where you're going. I've already but, brought it up but, in every interview I've but done. But <laughs> basically that just blew my mind. I basically wrestle in a fun, playful way, because I am I love lions in the movie, and the character loves lions, Martin loves lions, and it watching the shots afterwards, even coming from visual effects and being in visual effects for years, my brain was kind of looping on itself, going like, I, but I, what, the, 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 it's not a lion, like it wasn't a real lion, I'm touching the fur and I'm playing with it. It was crazy, and it was a stunt guy with, uh, you know, <laughs> The, the, the gray tights and like lion paws. I mean, it looked ridiculous in, on, on set. And the poor guy kept hitting me and I kept teasing him. I'd be like, dude, gotta be like a lion. They kept making him do it again and again. It was boiling hot. It's like landing on me. And it's like, dude, like a lion, like land on him, you know? That is one of the most incredible marriages of uh, live action and VFX. Crazy? Like you legit hug a VFX lion it's and crazy. it looks good. It I was good. wishing that I could just say like that I'd done it for real because it would I'd, it seems so cool. It like <laughs> seems really tough, but there's no way I would go near a real lion and do stuff like that. No chance. I'd be like, it's tame. I'd be like, no. Probably the yeah. smarter move. I yeah. respect you for going this route and not yeah. the other. Yeah. Um, Story-wise now, so you don't necessarily need this in the movie, but what your character does fascinates me to no end. So did you ever come up with any backstory pertaining to, you know, specific missions that he's been on in the past in order to, you know, help save wildlife in this region? Not, not specifically. I mean, there was just a lot of growing up in South Africa and you exposed to it quite a bit. There's a lot of, obviously, um, uh, people that work and that some of them like Kevin Richardson, the lion whisperer, you know, does amazing work with lions. There's a lot of people that are conserving animals and are working in the bush. And so just, I guess it's just kind of part of my upbringing, really. It's a really nice element of it that comes through really well. And it makes sure that the rogue lion feels like a threat and it feels like the movie's thrilling, but also doesn't make him come across like a villain. Yes. And I appreciate that. Um, I need to ask you about working with, I guess, Philippe in particular with these oneers because these are some really lengthy shots you have here, and they're complicated too with the heavy VFX and then some. So, was this particular situation a, a unique relationship between actor and cinematographer than maybe you've had in the past? It was actually a very unique situation between actor and first camera operator because it was steady cam most of the time. So, Philippe is obviously a big component. But the actual operator, the South African guy, actually, Dale uh, Rodkin, um, was unbelievable with just the amount of engagement between the cameraman and the actors and the director. There was an amazing, I've never had that on a movie before because we're doing so many winners. So Dale would constantly be looking at like, well, could you do this? Could you, could you maybe, if you move this way, can I move this, you know, in this direction? So we'd spend, sometimes we did some shots you know, do a seven minute take, you rehearse the whole morning 
and then you just have like three chances to get it when the sun is just perfect. So it was pretty, it was pretty fun, but it was, it well was definitely unique between camera and, and actor for me. It was very, very effective. So I have one last question for you. You know where I'm going with this mm -hmm. one. What can you tease about what you're doing as a director coming up? And maybe also just in general, what, what are some of your priorities as a director, given all your experience acting, mm -hmm. what are some you know particular itches that you will have behind the lens that you are eager to get to scratch? I'm doing a film that I wrote and directed and acting called Sapien Safari, which is basically I play like an alien naturalist and Earth is like a privately owned reserve by a wealthy philanthropic alien. And it's very satirical science fiction comedy. And it's probably going to get me into all kinds of trouble. Um, and the itch that I have to scratch is just somebody make a movie with balls, you know, it's prepared to say stuff that that are on people's minds but everyone's nervous right now everyone's like i feel like creatives are nervous of their own shadow so i'm gonna make something and step off a cliff and either just like die or people will go like oh finally you know it's one or the other it's not i'm, I'm not a half measures guy yeah. so we'll see i much prefer movies that have only reactions on the polar opposite yes, exactly. end of the spectrum and nothing in between because that's what keeps this business exciting exactly the worst thing is like you work for two years on a movie and then people come out and go like how was it yeah, it was okay I want you to come out and go like, I hated that or that was amazing. Like that blew my mind. Then at least it feels like I'm getting some reaction. Otherwise, it's just like, yeah, it's okay. What are we, what are we doing now? Are we having burgers? Or like, what are we having? I feel you. I believe in you. Rooting for that one. Thank you so much.